watch this series on how I help you get into vet school. Let's get this thing started. Welcome back everybody. This week our question is from Emily who says, I want to try to get into vet school my junior year. Did you just take the required classes and then apply? Because that's what I wanna to try to do. Okay, so a bit of background for those who haven't seen my previous videos. I got accepted to the University of Georgia during my junior year of undergrad. And like I said, the reason I was able to do this was because I took all of the required classes I needed to apply by the end of my junior year. And that means I actually applied to vet school during the summer after my sophomore year, before my junior year, during that break. And I also took the GRE during that summer as well. And the key thing to think about here is there's actually virtually no way to get all those required classes you need to apply to vet school by the end of your sophomore year. So when you go to apply at the end of your sophomore year, you actually list all the classes you're going to take during your junior year so the vet schools can see that you're going to have all those classes completed by the end of the, your junior year. And actually they'll only be looking at your GPA for all the classes you took up until your spring semester of your junior year. But to give you some advice, if you do try that, be optimistic. Be as optimistic as you can but don't expect to get in. Because like I said, it's very rare to get accepted during your junior year. So rare, in fact, that I virtually couldn't find any statistics online about juniors that have gotten accepted into vet school. And I personally feel extremely lucky to have gotten in that early. Because when I did apply my junior year, I, I didn't expect to get in. The only reason I did it was because I had all those courses I needed to apply by the end of my junior year, and my advisor said, hey, you've had all these classes, you've done well enough so far, you really need to try to apply to see if you can actually get accepted that early. And I was like, hey, <laughs> why not? And so I did, I did apply that early because like I said, I didn't think I was gonna get in, but I had the opportunity to, and so I took it. And this isn't to say that you can't get in. It can happen, <laughs> I'm a prime example, it can happen. So if you want it, please go for it. There's no one stopping you, you can do it. I have full confidence in you. But if you don't get accepted your junior year, just know like, <laughs> it's okay. You have, you have your senior year to apply, you have after your senior year to apply, you have many chances to apply, so. Don't take it personally. And don't let it discourage you from applying again. And it can be a good thing because vet schools actually do, from what I've heard, vet schools actually do like repeat applicants. But of course, I do have to mention a few drawbacks of applying that early. For one, that means you're gonna have to take all of these hard classes at the same time, like physics and organic chem in the same semester, which can be very hard. So you need to think about that if you can actually take all those hard classes in that time period before you apply. And also, if you do that, you're virtually going to be going through seven years straight of schooling, which can be hard and can drain you. So definitely no chance of taking a gap year to rejuvenate for this vigorous program of vet school. But yeah, if you wanna do for it, I recommend it. Saves you a year of money from your senior year of undergrad and it's just one less year of school. So yeah, go for it. And that brings us to the main topic of this video, which is the graduate record examination or the GRE for short. And this is essentially the standardized examination for getting accepted into vet school. Most people consider it a hyped up SAT examination, if you will. And this tests your verbal reasoning, your quantitative reasoning, and your analytical writing, which basically means your math, your English, and your writing skills. And personally, in my own opinion, I despise it and I have nothing good to say about it. Yeah, that's right, GRE folks. I hope y'all are listening. Personally, in my own opinion, I think standardized tests are pointless in assessing one's ability to do well in graduate school. And I really think the GRE is very pointless in testing your aptitude for doing well in vet school. And I think it's hugely outdated and really needs to be done away with, guys. But uh, that's, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> and unfortunately, it is required to apply to most vet schools, except Michigan State University, Virginia Maryland Regional, and Purdue University. Thanks, Amber, for that tip. But actually, interestingly enough, the vet schools Cornell University, Ohio State, and Western University Health Sciences, those three universities, they will either accept the GRE or the MCAT examination, if you wanna try your luck at that one. And I think it's great that universities are starting to look past the GRE for their application requirements, because come on guys, it's 2018. Let's move past these silly standardized cookie cutter tests that determine our future. Like, really. But for now, if you wanna to go to any of these other universities, you're gonna to have to do as well as you can on this GRE exam, unfortunately. And as far as my own experiences with the GRE, well, let's take a look back to a simpler time. The year was 2015, and it was just before I took the GRE examinations. Let's have a look at this video I recorded from that time. <laughs> So I'm about to go take the GRE, and for those of you who don't know, GRE is basically like the SAT on steroids, or to get into graduate school. I mean, he's got a point. But I'm literally having flashbacks to high school. Like I took the SAT like at least 
four times. <laughs> like PSAT like eight times. It's true. Well, those are some rough days. But, you know, I was thinking this day's gonna suck. You know, I gotta take the GRE. But you know, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. It could be raining. It could be sick. That would suck. That would really suck. It's true. So just remember that, guys. Whether you're trying to get through the day, got a challenge coming up, got a test to study for, just trying to get through work, you got this. We can do this together. We got this. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go take this test. But y'all have a great day. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Young Andrew, yeah, we totally got this. <laughs> but in reality, we did not have this, or should I say, I did not have this, because at the end of that exam, I scored a 296 on that GRE, which, if you're keeping track, is pretty much 10 to 15 points lower than most accepted students into vet school, the standard being around 310 for average acceptance rates. And the reason I didn't do well on it was because I literally didn't study for it at all, like not a single day, hour, or minute of my time that I'd take trying to study for the GRE. I was pretty much done with that at that point. I'd taken the SAT many, 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 many times, and by this point, I was like, eh, I'll just take the GRE, maybe. I'll be optimistic and do really good on it. But I did, as you can see by that very, a <sighs> very cringeworthy younger Andrew of myself. And that was really incredibly stupid on my part. And the lesson I wanna teach you guys is to please make sure you have and set aside enough time to study for this GRE exam. Because it's coming, you're gonna have to take it, so you might as well take the time to study for it now. And you especially need to study for it if you aren't good at standardized tests like myself, clearly. <laughs> so that means either taking any GRE courses that are available to you. I do know of some good ones online, like Magoosh, Kaplan Test Prep, or the Princeton Review. Not sponsored, by the way. Or another good idea that I heard from someone is try to make flashcards of challenging test vocabulary. So you can go through those every day and make new ones every day and go through those so you expand your vocabulary and get ready for that section of the test. And if you know you're weak in a certain subject, mine was English. I sucked at reading fast and all those questions. And if you're bad on those sections of the test, make sure you spend even more time to study for those portions. You know, just basic simple stuff to help prepare yourself to do good on the GRE exam. But at the end of the day, Make sure you set aside enough time to study for the GRE exam and give yourself enough time to take the GRE before you apply to vet school so that if you do very poorly the first time you take the exam, you can take it again before you have to apply to vet school. Because I don't know about most universities, but as far as the University of Georgia goes, they actually took the top score on your GRE exam. So for instance, let's say you took the GRE twice and the first time you took it, you did worse in math than the second time. What vet schools will do is take your highest scores from both times you took the exam or however many times you took the exam and take that into consideration when looking at your application. And like I said, I don't know if every university does this, but I do know that the University of Georgia does do this. And when it's all said and done, I got accepted into the University of Georgia with that low of a GRE score, a 296. I got in with a 296, guys. So what we can take away from this is that it's important to remember that the average statistic for people getting into vet school it's just an average. That means people got lower test scores, people got higher, and then the average of all those combined was that score. So that means if you do have a low spot in your application, like the GRE was for me, some of my higher aspects of my application can help pull me out of that low GRE score and can help round out my application so that I could get accepted. And that should be the case for you guys. If you do have a certain spot in your application that is weaker than others, vet schools will look, take that into consideration. And hey, at the end of the day, they might accept you over someone with a perfect GRE score if the rest of your application is good enough. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope you learned some from it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button for your boy. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see y'all next time on the goal to get in one of these seats. One of these coveted hundred or more seats to get into vet school. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time. Goodbye. Me before vet school. Huh. I need this seat. I need to secure my spot. Me after vet school. Are you serious? Another test? That's like the fourth one this week.